what's up guys ViperFPV here and today I uh, wanted to show you guys some tools and some uh, equipment that I do use to build my quadcopters and also what I bring out with me into the field uh, so let's go ahead and go to the bench and uh, take a look at everything I do bring and uh, show you guys pretty much what I use so let's see you there alright guys we're at the bench and I have all my main tools that I use day to day when I'm building a quadcopter or even when I'm out in the field so pretty much what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go over the soldering iron first. Now I am using this, this generic soldering iron I had got from Radio Shack and it was like $25. It does have temper, temperature control which you do probably want to have when you're doing stuff especially with PCBs, flight controllers and then you're doing stuff with uh, power leads and stuff like that. Pretty much the main purpose is you can lower the temperature when you're doing stuff on the flight controller and then raise the temperature up when you're doing stuff like on the um, doing XT60s, doing uh, motor wires, doing ESC wires, and all that type of stuff. This is the tip that pretty much it has on it. I'm using a chisel tip at the moment, and I've had this thing for about a year, and it's working just fine. So probably when it does break, though, I probably will upgrade to something a little better, so it lasts longer, because um, I do see it starting to wear out, but it's still working completely fine and pretty much goes to the temperature perfectly. So the other thing I would like to go ahead and do um, is suggest is you want to probably get two tips. Go ahead and get a chisel tip if you're doing this hobby, and also get the um, the pointed tip. So when, like I said, if you're doing like the the uh, fine stuff like on the flight controller, like really tiny spots, you want to go ahead and use the pointed tip so you can kind of get fine control where you want to put your solder. And then you want to use like the thick chisel type of tip for when you're doing um, like the XC60 and the ESCs and stuff like that kind of correlates with how much temperature you're going to be using as well. So we go ahead and put this away and put this back. Now another thing too I didn't talk about it actually is solder too. So I'm using 6337 solder. You can either use 6040 or 6337. I actually prefer the 6337 and I'll provide a link to everything. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if I'll be able to provide a link to that soldering iron, but I'll go ahead and try to see what I can do in the, the comment, the product description and all that stuff below. Um, but this is 6337. I think I got this stuff from Banggood. And it actually works pretty well, so I'm going to keep with it. And this is another soldering iron I use. This is the one I use out at the field. This is a TS100, and I actually have a full entire review of it on my channel, so I'll link that above like about right now. And this really comes in handy when you're out in the field and something breaks, a motor breaks, ESC goes bad. You can just go ahead and connect this thing up to a 4S, 3S battery, and then you can go ahead and start soldering right away. And it actually heats up really fast too, which is really nice to have. So let me put that aside. And moving on to soldering as well. This is pretty much a helping hand. These are pretty cheap, like five bucks or so. And they do have different ones. They can get quite expensive. The more kind of ha helping hands you have, the more expensive they do get. Um, but I make buy with just the two. Kind of put a wire on there. You can solder your wires to it. It kind of helps you hold stuff instead of burning your hands when you're soldering things up. So I'll definitely re strongly recommend getting one of these when you're getting into the hobby and starting to solder. Now this thing right here, this is a really nice to have thing. This is actually XT60 and it has all the th other things here, XT90, and then it has a mini T and a T, and then it has barrel jacks here too. This is pretty much what this does is it holds your XT60 straight up. So then you can go ahead and solder um, pretty much right to it. You don't have to worry about fumbling on your mat, burning your mat, or not being able to get a good connection. So this pretty much holds it nice and tight. It has a little clamp right here. You just tighten up when you get it in there and then you can go ahead and go to town soldering what you need to solder up. Another thing I use too is I have you know some just standard needle nose pliers. Uh, you can pick them up pretty much anywhere. I mean you pay more I guess for more quality but really what we're doing we're not really doing anything mechanical really where you're gonna be breaking these so you probably can pick anyone up anyway. I do recommend getting some a, type, a tiny type because I actually like to use these when I'm soldering to kind of hold wires too. And then I have a bigger set too when I need to have a little more force or a little more strength on stuff. Another thing I like to have too is these are actually locking. Uh, I'm not really sure the exact name for them, uh, but they pretty much lock. So you can kind of hold a wire, and I actually use these out in the field. So I'll be I grab a wire, I'll lock it, and I can kind of just leave it like that. And I'll hold a wire together, and I can solder stuff together or 
maybe if I have a camera cable that came out, I can just go ahead and lock onto it, and I can kind of just guide it back into the camera hole or whatever I'm trying to do. So these are really neat to have. I'll probably leave a link to these in the description as well. Now I do have two sets of different um, hex drivers here. These ones I really, really like. And I actually use these day to day every single day. These are actually from Race Day Quads. And they come, I think, in all different sizes. It actually comes in a whole pack. I think they're like, they're a little expensive. They're like $30 or something like that. But they are titanium tipped and they do not strip at all. So I have, since I've moved to these, I have not had to buy replacements because every time you're doing that stuff, we'll strip these out, strip your bolts out. This thing works amazing. Um, so I'll leave, go ahead and leave a link to these as well in the description. Now these are another thing I leave, actually bring these out to the field to have an old set of these. This is something that Joshua Bardwell recommended and these are titanium tipped as well but these things are like 15 bucks for a whole entire set. And I just brought one out just to kind of show you what they look like but they're all different colors, blue, uh, black or whatever else color they have them in. And they pretty much work just as good as these ones. Um, the only thing that I li don't like about this is just some people might like it. It's just a little harder on your hands when you're turning stuff because it's a little more rigid. But you do get, you know, really good twisting power and stuff like that when you're using it. But I do recommend these because it just feels easier on my hand. I do still have enough force to be able to tighten things the way I want to. And they work really well. All right, now what I'm going to go ahead and talk about is this prop removal tool. This is from Race Day Quads, and I absolutely love these. I actually bought two of them because I just feel like they work so well. Um, so this is really basic. It just has a, you know, a bolt, you know, thingamajig on the bottom, whatever you want to call it, socket or whatever, uh, nut thing. And uh, and pretty much what you do is just turn your uh, your prop nuts on, off, tighten them up real good, and it gives you enough force to be able to tighten them up good, enough force to be able to take remove them as well. Um, I really do recommend this, and I've only bought this, and I've only used this one. Um, before I used to use this a ratchet with a socket and it used to work good but you know I'd rather just have something that it just works and I'll have to make sure I have the right socket or whatever else to be able to remove my props or put them on and especially put them on really quickly if you're at a race or something like that uh, this comes in really handy so I really strongly recommend these another thing too you want to go ahead and get yourself some you know side cutters or dikes that they like to call them and just pretty much just cutting your wires to length um, I'd actually do also recommend if you want to get a bigger set, maybe for some bigger wires, maybe a smaller set for some smaller ones. It also helps you clip off zip ties and everything else. Um, but that's really handy to know as well. Another thing you might also want to get to as well is pretty much a set of strippers to strip some wires. You actually don't necessarily need this. If you're good with a razor blade, which I'm about to talk about next, you can just go ahead and roll your silicone wire and strip them like that. So this is actually not absolutely needed, but you might, not, you might as well have it. It might not hurt when you might be doing some thicker wires or maybe they're not silicone wires. You might need to strip those as well to solder them. All right, now I want to go ahead and put this in the video as well at the end because um, pretty much that's where all, all the tools I use. But this thing right here is a Strix power board and pretty much what it does is you can use this as a power distribution board. Uh, it takes a 3S to a 6S LiPo. You plug that in. You can go ahead and be at the field. You can have a um, your GoPro charging off of it, you can have your soldering iron going off of it, so pretty much it provides you know adequate power to power multiple things off the same battery. And it does have a little thing here to where you can pick how much your input voltage will go down before it actually beeps at you and tells you, hey, the battery's too full, too low, go ahead and exchange it for another battery if you're using it a lot. It also monitors your voltage right here as well. Um, but I think that's really it for tools. Um, maybe you also want to probably pick up some, you know, some tweezers, um, so screwdrivers and Phillips head screwdrivers, you really pretty much can't go wrong with any types you get. I pretty much just use these little guys. Um, I also have um, this as well. Some, uh, I think these are actually snap-on, but it's from when I used to be a mechanic and work on cars. Um, but pretty much what you can go ahead and do is go with any screwdriver set, really. You can't go wrong. If you get some titanium tip ones, maybe not strip out or be as bad as some generic ones you might get at Harbor Freight. Uh, but that's pretty much all the tools you really probably need to go ahead and um, set up a quadcopter and get it all working. Even if you're at a field, you can go ahead and um, work on it out there if something does tend to break. Um, but pretty much that's about it, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. 
and uh, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.